All right, and hello everyone, and welcome to the ninth session of Amalthea. I don't really have much in the... Oh, no, wait, I do have one announcement. Um, for those of you who are, you know, Star Trek Adventures uh, fans, aficionados, etc., etc., um, I have the absolute privilege of starting next Friday. I will be hosting another game, uh, not game mastering, just, just hosting on the channel. Uh, the Kairos game of Star Trek Adventures. It's a uh, 29th century uh, temporal agent style campaign. And that will be uh, run uh, Game Master wise by GM Josh. Uh, you also might know him as Captain Miller on the Akagi. So if you're interested in that, uh, tune in Friday's afternoons and should be a good time. Uh, but other than that, I think we're just going to go ahead and jump right into things. Uh, so, Preer, I believe you have the opening log today. And if not, I can uh, always make one up myself. I have one. Chief Medical Officer's log stardate 62967.1. Well, my life just got more interesting. The Gamma Quadrant never ceases to amaze me. Well, and I guess that applies to Jensen as well. As the fleet has captured their little rogue planet, Jensen decided to ascend into a higher being right in front of my eyes. His Esper ratings were through the roof, far beyond those of people who have come in contact with the Galactic Barrier. Now we have to see what is causing this before it happens to more people. The deck 4 seems to be the source. Today is going to be interesting, to say the least. End log. Alrighty. So, as you might expect, we're going to Start in sick bay, and uh, as much as I tried to do an energy version of Jensen's token, nothing I did looked light. So we're just gonna have to theater of the mind a little bit here. But in any case, uh, Jensen is uh, pretty much as he was before. He's just made of pure energy. Um, he s seems to be able to still interact with objects around him. I mean, he's he's sitting on the bio bed where he initially was, but uh, yeah, he. Uh, he has, uh, as you have said, quote unquote, ascended. Um, but to start things off, Prier, uh, I would like you to roll me a reason and medicine at a difficulty of one, please. Reason? Why are we not rolling it? Oh, there it is. Um, would I have a focus? Uh, if you have diagnostics, or if you have um, anything with uh, diagnosis in general, I would say yes. I have xenobiology. I'm going to say yes, but the complication range will increase to an 18 to 20. Okay. Alright, so hey, you start off with momentum. So, Prier, your tricorder and other instruments are still able to get readings from Jensen, but something very strange happens as you begin to uh, sort of look at the data. It's almost as if there's a subroutine in your medical database that is deliberately limiting access to correlating data. And when you go to explore this more, a big old warning flashes across the screen that says a level 10 captain's clearance is required. Prior to Captain Merthyrin. Uh, <clears throat> out of character, what's been happening up at the bridge where I've been? Uh, well, so to catch people up, after you guys launched some of the Callistos to help uh, tow the powerless Ophion and uh, Lysithia back to, you know, sort of recoup their power supplies, uh, not much has happened. You recently had captured the rogue planet, and pretty much it. Your excitement for the day was... <laughs> pretty much ended until this happened. Alright, well, well, main thing is, have I noticed that something screwy's happened? Oh, right, because uh, you're an empath. Um, yes, you said well, something... Well, I was thinking more, have I noticed that the ship sort of went ka -chunk? Uh, no, the ship has not gone ka -chunk, but you have noticed a disturbance in the force. Okay. So, uh, Merthrin here, um... Sorry... Go ahead. You need to get to sick bay as soon as possible, like two seconds ago, kind of thing. Is the, hang on. Okay, I've never felt like this before. But has Q come on board? 
Um, not exactly. It's our pal Jensen. There's a prolonged silence. I'll be down shortly. Thank you. Right. Yep, so Mercer will sort of stand up slowly. Gortig, Commander Gortig, you have the bridge. Aye, uh, Captain. Yes. All right. So, Mertrin. So, Mertrin. You, yep, just uh, goes into the turbo lift, takes the trip to the other end of the ship. Mm-hmm. And you show up in short order. And yeah, Mertrin, when you walk into the main part of Sick Bay, you see that Jensen is, as I said, comprised almost entirely of energy. Uh, you can see right through him, but he, again, seems to be able to interact with objects. And he looks over at you, Captain, and says, uh, Hi, Captain. Uh, sir, uh, I, I would stand, but, but the doc here said I should stay where I am. Is, is, this, is this Lieutenant Jensen? Yes, sir. It is. I need you over here. And Mertz sort of like just comes over, just not taking his eyes off Jensen, just like, how, what, the? Uh. Exactly. I need a level 10 clearance to be able to even access the information on this. Right. Um, so he'll take the pad and like look at the level 10 clearance and like if there's anything like for Captain's eyes only that he has to clear before he can give it back to Priya. Yeah, so if you enter in your access code, uh, it's going to take a control and a command at difficulty zero. Alrighty. Always a good sign when he's feeding us momentum. Yeah, I've started to realize I don't do that enough, so I'm trying to do it a little bit more often. Aha! My psychic phenomena focus finally comes into te- into, into use. <laughs> I've had that since the start of Ophion. <laughs> Law of averages. All right, hey, you Come have momentum. All right, so Mirthrin, you're going to, you know, you put in your access code and it begins feeding you data. And what you realize is something that uh, may require further explanation, but let me tell you what I have and then you can ask questions to clarify. So what the data is saying is that Mr. Jensen here is a dowd or at least a fourth of one and if you're not familiar with the dowd as a species um they were encountered in the next generation uh the third season the survivors episode uh long story short they are a sort of quote unquote higher being type thing and they have the ability to do quite a lot um Long story short, uh, they can, at a whim, could erase an entire species. Uh, But they are not Q level. Uh, Q can bring people back from the dead. Jensen, or at least the Dowd in general, cannot do that. Now, the reason this has taken a level 10 security clearance is because Starfleet Command has known about this situation since Jensen's grandmother, Sarah Jensen, uh, was revealed to be a half dowd in 2162. Out of character, that would be the Avenger. So now you guys are semi-linked. Have fun with that. And the oh, final... Which one was that? Oh, say again? Avenger. Avenger, yeah. Oh, uh, would... Would... Uh... Oh, you cut That's... out there at the end. Now that was me losing the text-to-speech. Ah. Um, text-to-speech. Push to talk. Yes, I, I've been a text-to-speech generator this whole time. <laughs> that explains so much. I know, right? <laughs> um, one other little bit of tidbit that you get is that Starfleet obviously has known about this, and their reasoning is is that long as the current Jensen does not start displaying powers or otherwise controls them, he's free to be in Starfleet. And there's some guidance, like there's studies that have been run on his grandmother, Sarah Jensen. Uh, there, there's just page after page of medical data, but that's the gist of what you're reading. Main thing, there's no like secret, you must follow this protocol if this comes up sort of thing. It's just, hey, this is the situation. Correct. Yeah, it's not an Omega 
Omega directive thing. It's just you needed to see this before anyone else did. Yeah, because that would be a little awkward. This is a serious yep. lack. So Mercerin sort of looks at, looks that over and like probably Priya and Jensen probably fidgeting for a little while as he sort of spends a couple of minutes reading it. So, um, good news and bad news, Jensen. Let's hear the good news, sir. There is nothing wrong with you. Uh, Prayer will like. Stare. This is natural, ish. Sir, uh, no offense, but I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to be like this. And he sort of waves a glowing hand around. Well, normally, no. Humans don't generally sublimate into beings of pure energy. Uh, however, you are not fully human. It says here you are, in fact, a quarter dowd. What? What's a dowd, sir? And Mertheran just sort of, like, indicates Jensen. Jensen just, Jensen just... He just stares at you questioningly like he doesn't really know what to say. Like he's as lost as anyone else. Okay, so you know what the Q are. Wait, are, are you saying I'm a Q? I'm saying you're like the Q's lower-powered evolutionary cousin. Doc, is this some sort of elaborate prank... I mean, Lord knows I know I deserve it for bothering you so much, but th this, is, this is a joke, right? Like, I'm, I'm actually fine. I mean, I'm, I'm having a dream. I mean, if I this would. is a prank, it's a prank involving the Admiralty. Oh, that's just cruel, Rosazzo. <laughs> I'm just reading in the chat. Wait, wait. So wait, you, you're telling me that it, I'm a god? wouldn't go that far. I mean, you can't... Well, put it this way, you have the potential to cause a lot of damage, but you're not quite up to fundamental laws of reality breaking. And Jensen actually brightens up and he says, wait a second. If... If I'm like a Q... Sir, I, I think I can take the Amalthy and the entire fleet home. Uh, Jensen, no. Uh, yeah, and I'd imagine we both go, oh, wait, 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 before you do that, and then he just goes and does it. Yep, he, uh, he snaps his fingers, and immediately everyone on the, on the Amalthea is flung to the right as you feel yourself being almost glued to the deck plates as the entire ship is just wrenched through space, and everything buckles, and the lights flicker, and... Uh, when everything comes to a stop, finally, uh, those of you in sick bay, Jensen is no longer to be found. Commander oh, Gortag, this I am... is... oh, this is bad. Ca Captain Mercer into the bridge. Status report. Nobody uh, move. I may have acid it in surprise. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is uh, the Amaltia's relative position? So that would require... Um, I mean, that, that would have been Mirthrin's next thing would be... Basically, he's just checking on the bridge that no one's dead. Mm -hmm. And then oh, oh. Mirthrin to Astro Navigation. Uh, let's, let's go to the bridge for this one. All right. Actually, who is it, it, in charge of Astro Navigation? Uh, I mean, you have an entire department dedicated to it, but I think Ensign Hamasi being your science officer would handle this. Um, so if somebody wants to roll... Ensign Hamasi, could you just do a... a, a ah, let, let me work out what the technobabble here is. Mm -hmm. Hamasi, can you do an immediate scan to figure out where we are in the quadrant? On it, sir. Uh, and yeah, uh, while someone is rolling for Hamasi, Hamasi is going to be rolling a Reason and Science... Uh, the difficulty here is going to be a 2 because of your damage sensors. However, uh, if I recall correctly, because you repaired at least one breach of your sensors, the Amalthea yep. can assist. And Hooray. the Amalthea will be assisting you with a sensor's science, but the complication range will be an 18 to 20. 
Alrighty. Sub uh, spatial phenomena for focus. Uh, I would oh, say okay. astro navigation, mm -hmm. stellar cartography, or otherwise astrophysics would apply, but astro phenomena not so much. All right. Well, she still rolls well. All right. Well, you got the two successes you need. All right. Yep. So uh, Hamasi uh, kind of looks at says and says, uh, "Sir, you're gonna want to come back up to the bridge." A long shot here, but are we in the Alpha Quadrant? No, no, sir. Uh, yeah, you're going to want to come to the bridge. Uh, that was a nice thought. On my way. <clears throat> Commander Gortag, I'm I'm receiving several um, damage reports from across all decks. Uh, Priya, um, could you, like, scan to make sure Jensen isn't, um, I don't know, dissolved into the atmosphere or something? I'll do a scan here quick, although I'm getting casualty reports from a couple different spots on the ship, so I'll be dealing with that here too. I'm acknowledging air reports as fast as they can come in. Free pack to captain. On my way. What the hell are you doing to my ship? Hey, okay. In my defense, this time, nothing to do with... But okay, partially to... I'll explain later. <laughs> Humans. Right. Still not a human. All right, so Mirthrin, you arrive on the bridge in a very quick order, and uh, by the time you arrive, uh, Hamasi has put up a hollow display of the galaxy where you usually would have, you know, like a uh, a communication is so that everyone on the bridge can see this. And what you see is that she has highlighted where you were uh, around Suthia and where you are now. And you see that you are now 125 light years uh, away from where you were, so that you're actually farther out towards the rim of the galaxy, away from the Alpha Quadrant. God damn it, Get out the end there. Okay, that that is that is a lot better than it could have been. Uh, uh, out of character, do I do I remember who here has complained about Jensen? I know Gorteg has. He has a file as thick as one of your arms for false security alerts. Oh dear! All right, I so much will come and go. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, you're going to find out sooner or later, so may as well tell you now so you can get the console punching out of the way. Okay, so... Lieutenant Jensen ascended to a higher state of being and attempted to send us home. He instead sent us 120 light years in the opposite direction. Uh, Cap Captain, by my calculations, it would take us roughly 30 days at warp 9 to reach Suthia. Um, out of curiosity, did any of the other ships come with us? No, so that is actually something very important that Derval will see. Uh, yeah. To I went back and I re-listened to the video, and we didn't specify which Callistos were out assisting the rest of the fleet. So I'm Probably going to say you. that only the Io and the Europa came with you, because they were in the Amalthea when Jensen snapped. And are now probably uh, plastered against the bulkhead. Probably. Captain, I'm not detecting any of the other fleet vessels. Only the Io and the Ganymede are with us as they are in their hangar bays. However, I am receiving extensive reports of damage in the hangar bays as most of the shuttles and fighters have come off their mooring lines. Damage crews begin assessment and repair. I will... I will be in my ready room if uh, you're going to need me at some point. Just call me when you need me. And he's going to sort of start going into the ready room. And as he goes in, we're going, Compute, computer, aspirin, whiskey. <laughs> it's an inventive method. I like it. All right. So, uh, Mirthrin, as you step into the ready room, uh, we're going to stay on the bridge here for a little bit. Uh, so, Rizazo. I would like you to roll me a reason security, please. And uh, I would like the ship to assist you with a sensor security 
And let's just say for sake of argument that unless you magically fix your breaches, that until I say otherwise, your complication range for all sensor tasks uh, involving the Amalthea are complication range 18 to 20. Mm -hmm. The first thing I'd be doing is also sending a security team down to check out the uh, the, the Romulans or anyone who have, we have on the like in Briggs. Okay. So yeah, the, the Tholian, that's the Tholian and... Uh, Oh, uh, in that case, it's worth noting the Amalthea actually rolled an 18 on that sensor check. Okay. I will take some threat for that then. Uh, so it was what in security? Uh, reason security. Hmm. Starfleet protocol maybe as a focus? I don't know. If, uh... Um, I would say if you have tactical systems, that would apply. All right. Well, I'll see what I. Can. Ooh, nice. Very nice. nice. Will there be? All right. Someone could get the uh, get the Amalthea, please. Uh, okay. From an engineering standpoint, mm -hmm. what is the major damage from this fl flinging that has happened? Well, we'll get to you after I'm done with Rosazzo. Right. Oh, sensors right. plus security. All right, you guys get a momentum. You're up to four. Nice. So, Rosazzo, uh, you know, the good news is that your tactical systems check out. Thankfully, uh, none of the phaser arrays, none of the torpedoes were uh, damaged in whatever Jensen did. Uh, however, you are noticing that uh, you, you, you are coordinating a little bit with Hamasi, and you're realizing that... Your top speed is likely going to be limited um, because while you have sort of started repairing the sensors, uh, in order to go warp nine, um, you would need greater sensor functionality. The best you can do safely is warp five. That's not quick, good. Which quick calculations would increase our travel time to something. I'm running calculations. Hundreds now. of years. I do not... Uh, that would be roughly 213 uh, days, sir. Commander, so, uh, uh, Commander, I do not think part of a year. make our way back anytime soon. I'm... Commander Gortag, with your permission, sir, I would like to launch probes to understand where our, what might be around us. Granted, and might as well launch one of the Callistos just in case. Understood. I am de deploying. I will be deploying the Ganymede, sir. Uh, it's the Io and the Europa, not the Ganymede. Oh, Io Europa. My bad. That's I shall good. deploy the, the Ganymede. Europa. Is still with the rest of the fleet. All right, um, so, uh, oh, go ahead, Gortek. Can I try pinging one of the other ships, preferably the ones with power to be able to receive our, a message? Uh, yes, you can attempt to uh, hail them. Uh, let's see, because I know this is like a difficulty zero. Uh, so let me look it up real fast. I know it's communication something for the ship. I just got to remember what it is for... Uh, for you guys. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, open hailing frequencies. This is going to be a control engineering for Gortag. And the Amalthea will assist you with a communications and engineering. And the difficulty is indeed a zero. Okay. I can roll ship. We don't roll yeah. comms all that often on the ship. Cool. I'm sure I don't have a focus, so... Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. So don't even worry about the ship because he didn't roll any successes, but it's a difficulty zero, so you succeed either way. Um, so, uh, you are able to raise the May Yuan. So, Captain uh, Juano, <clears throat> or Captain Tuzon, uh, does appear uh, sort of on the view screen type deal. Uh, and I'm doing this so that uh, Prier gets a little bit more speaking time. Uh, Captain Tuzon, this is the Amalthea. 
do you read us? I'm reading you, Commander, although I'm not seeing you. What happened? Uh, we had some sort of spatial incident, and we have been flung somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 light years away. Uh, we, this message, or this communication is just to let you know that we are somewhat shipworthy and are, well, uh, I will send coordinates of where we are currently at. Understood. Do you want us to attempt to come out to you or hold position at Suthia? Uh, it would probably be better if you held position where you were at. Um, I will inform uh, Captain Merthrin of that decision and will let you know if he changes that decision. Understood. Uh, two's on out. Um, and then I will uh, chime the captain in his office. Or, or chirp it. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah will wander out. Yes? Uh, captain, I have made um, communications with the May 1 and apprised Captain Tuzon of our situation. I did not, um, however, tell him exactly what happened. Um, and uh, he questioned whether they should come to us or stay where they are. I chose for them to stay where they are, figuring that would be a safer uh, course of mm -hmm. action. Um, yeah, so if now that's like probably to... the best course of action. Bringing, in, bringing any other ships out here wouldn't do a great deal. Especially seeing, seeing as how we can't find Jensen right now, and not knowing what else is going on. Well, let's get those probes sent out, see where we are, if there's anything we need to be worried about while we try to get the sensors to the point where we can achieve Warp 9. The Europa will be deployed in five minutes, sir. And... Darval jumping the gun of what I was just about to say. Uh, I've also ordered the uh, one of the Callistos out um, to help with the probes as well as finding out where exactly we are. Alright. I will go down and see what, uh, see how Captain, how, Captain Freepack, how CPO Freepack is doing. Alright. So we go to engineering. And uh, in engineering, it is uh, understandably a little bit chaotic because, you know, everybody is running around making sure that, you know, nothing breached or nothing broke during whatever the hell happened. And uh, Chief Freepak, uh, you're starting to finally get a handle of the situation when uh, the captain himself walks into your uh, engineering bay. You really did a doozy this time. What, what happened? Would you believe Jensen happened? Oh, I, all you humans are the same. You, wherever you go, it just everything messes up. Still not a human. Anyway, um, we're currently about 120 light years out of our way, and everything took a bit of a knock. So currently we're just in damage control, seeing where we are, and then eventually we start limping back towards Suithia. Well, I'm, you're... You, you got all of this really lucky. I've got repair teams checking every inch of this hall, and you're lucky the EPS conduits didn't blow up when the internal... the uh, the uh, stabilization fields, the, the they didn't blow up. I'm spending two threat to make the nearest console blow out and spark. Not injuring anyone, but it blows out anyway. Ah... Uh. <laughs> So, looks like you could use all the hands you could get. If I could grow about four more, it'd be likely. Maybe make a couple copies of myself. You know, I know a guy who can use a transporter to do that. I'm just saying, if you give me, you know, the, the nod. <laughs> well, we'll table that for now, but uh, in the meantime, there's not a great deal I can do on the bridge, so I feel like occupying my hands with something. Where do you need me? 
Jeffrey's Tube 6, 8, 9, 16, Dex 5. I mean, you know where the, t the toolkits are. Con d d yeah. oh, oh, and... Give, give uh, me a ring if anyone tries to contact me. Uh, before you go, Captain, there is the situation of Deck 4. Did Arthur and I did Pierre bring this up to you? Uh, no, but I suspect it's probably related to the current situation. Well, I believe it was uh, involved somehow. He, there are a couple of more crew members running around with symptoms like Jensen's. I think we should probably investigate that before more of them start, mm. you know, flinging us across. Yes. Yeah. I'll get Priya to take a quick look at them after he's dealt with the emergency triage. I'm going to go do some scans of Deck 4 then, to see if what's going on. And Merthyrin goes, finds a set of tools, and climbs into the nearest set of Jeffrey's tubes. Mm -hmm. And because I think it's interesting, I think this is uh, a stellar example of probably the, one of the rare opportunities where an enlisted man gets to tell the captain what to do. Um, so let's see. Uh, between uh, Free Pack and Merthrin, I'll let you guys assist one another uh, so you can decide who takes the lead on this. But uh, I would like Freepak, to because he's actually a better engineer than me. Yeah, well. Uh, I would like you to roll me a insight and engineering. Uh, the difficulty here will be a two, unless Free Pack does it. In which case, because he is chief engineer, that will become a difficulty one. All right. Just looking at my talents. If you have uh, something like I know your ship, or uh, if you have diagnosed, oh, very nice, three successes. All right. Uh, insight. And just the one die, because I'm assisting. Mm -hmm. And while he's doing that, to answer your question, Walter, uh, no, they have not yet. All right, so hey, uh, you guys are not only capped on momentum, but you have two remaining that uh, you could spend to ask free questions. Uh, so between the two of you, uh, you realize that aside from some micro fractures uh, here and there, uh, the Amalthea weathered this pretty damn well. Uh, however, as you're kind of looking at the sensor array, looking at your warp core, looking at, you know, what your max possible speed, uh, it occurs to you that if you were to launch one of the Callistos and have it sort of fly in front of you, you might be able to do warp 8. Um, but the, the reason it's warp 8 and warp 9 is because the Callistos are only rated for warp 8 for an extended period of time. Captain, you ever ridden on the tail of a a beryllium com weight riding? We used to do it all the time back when we were racing. Captain, uh, sorry, I th was that directed at me? Or it was all yeah. a bit mumbly. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sick today. I said, have you ever? Yeah, I'll just pump your volume up. You ever ridden on the tail of a, a beryllium comet? They've done a little wake riding. We used to do it when we were racing all the time. Mm, can't say I have. They didn't really get any beryllium comets near Vulcan. Well, it's a pretty simple mechanic. It's a pretty simple thing, but I don't know how it would work. I don't. I don't deal with warp mechanics that much, but. Well, Wait, I, I do have a core mechanic. Uh, essentially, if we can get a Callisto to open a uh, to, to uh, engage its warp, we could potentially. I'm not sure how it would work with something this size and with these micro fractures. We could potentially ride it to increase their maximum speed, uh. sir. No, no, I, th I, th I think you're right, actually. Um, 
like it would take a bit of doing but if the callisto set up its warp bubble <clears throat> correctly it would sort of create a self-correcting wake that the amalthia could essentially just slide into the valley and ride the wake all the way back to Suapia. Yes, yes, that I think that'll work. Right, I'll I'll, I'll call up the science team, and see see if they can get a working model. I'll see what I can do to make sure we don't rattle apart while this happens. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, Mercer and all con through to. Uh, I think Hamasi is yep. science. Hamasi is science. So Mercer will sort of come to Hamasi and say, "Hey, uh, how do you feel about setting up a self-stabilizing warp wake in a Callisto shuttle?" Uh oh. Uh yeah, sir. I can I can start running the computations for that now if you'd like. Yeah. Excellent. Get get it started. You'll probably need a fair amount of time to get it done, but we've got a fair amount of repairs to do. Yes, sir. I will keep you apprised of the situation. <clears throat> All right. Alrighty. So uh, we're going to cut back to sick bay. Uh, understandably, at this point, Prier, uh you've had a very large influx of people with bumps and bruises. Uh, thankfully, there are no serious injuries. Uh, I think the worst case you have is a guy with a broken arm, but thankfully it's not much worse than that. Uh, however, uh, as things start to die down and you get a handle of the situation, you do receive a message from Drake. And for flavor, I'm going to say that Drake was on guard duty for the Admiral's pod when this all happened. So Drake, you are you're over here. And yeah. Pre will just walk over to Drake. Okay. So uh you go over and check on the uh well let me say this. So you ping the door. Uh Drake, you have not left because I think it's in character for Drake to go full on damage control mode. Um so I'm gonna let you respond to him chiming the door. Uh damage control as far as the pod or as far as everything on the ship i would say in terms of from a security standpoint since you're on guard duty that your oh. concern is you know protecting your guarding gotcha uh then the chime at the door uh state name and rank dr lieutenant commander Preer. is you anybody rang. is anybody with you no um, Drake will, uh, cause you know, it, it's this far in the future. I'm sure that there's a way of me looking through a, uh, a small screen to see on the outside, not like an actual people, but I mean an actual like camera on the outside to see if he's actually alone. Yeah. He appears to be alone. Okay. Then I will open the door and when he comes in, I am armed and the phaser is out. Well, hello to you too, Lieutenant Commander. Uh, I think there's something wrong with the pod. I'll walk over and pull up my tricorder. Mm -hmm. So you are indeed seeing, uh, since you're already capped at momentum, uh, you are seeing that whatever the transition process did, uh, it is basically causing the Admiral to begin thawing ahead of schedule. So if you want to stabilize him and get the pod working again, this will be an extended task. Oh, no. Oh, this is not good. We've got to stabilize the pod. Well, you do have six momentum. Mm -hmm. Well, I like right. to point out that the GM did say if. If we want. <laughs> well, let's not kill the Admiral, so let's try to stabilize the pod. All right. So, uh, this is going to be actually a rather simple uh, extended task, and I'll type it out as I say it. So the work track is going to be a 12. The magnitude is going to be a 3. There will be no resistance. Uh, the default difficulty will be a 3 as well. And I would say that the uh, default task for this is going to be a control and a medicine, or a control and engineering 
And I would say that Drake, you can assist him on this. Okay. Um, what, uh, if I give him an advantage, would it only count on one set of the rolls, or would it count for the entire extended task? Um, it would re depend on what the advantage is. Okay. Then it probably won't work. Okay. Uh, I will I say, my, control me my control medicine is a 15, so... Um, would... Like, research methods or emergency medicine count as focuses? I would say definitely emergency medicine. Alrighty, and I am going to spend one momentum for a third die. Alright. And uh, what did you want my assist? Um, uh, it can be either control medicine or control engineering. Alright. And I'm going to re-roll that zero. All right. Zero. <clears throat> mm, interesting. So, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to follow procedure here. You're trying to do what you can to reboot the cryogenic process and... Uh, unfortunately, the computer, while it's accepting your inputs, the actual uh, mechanics of the pod itself are just not uh, accepting your commands. And I'm going to say that that takes about 15 minutes. And I am counting intervals here. So you can try again, uh, but just, rem just have in mind that I am counting intervals, which means that something could happen if you take too long. This is not good. This is not good. All right, Drake, let's try a little bit more percussive maintenance. All right, I will All say right. at this point, you may now do... Time to recalibrate motion. the spark plugs while the engine's not running. Mm -hmm. I will say you will now be doing a daring in medicine or a daring in engineering. Okay. All right, one assist from Drake. I'm going to go three uh, momentum for two extra dice. All right. Wow. Well, you can reroll one of them. Uh, I, no, I think that's a talent. I was going to ask if I could blow my determination to let him reroll, but I think that's a command talent yeah well it's not a talent it's the commanding officer and exo ability okay. uh but no he's got three successes all right so prayer if you can roll me a uh what is that six challenge die for you please all right hey that's a breakthrough uh so yes by you know because you said it be with a little uh percussive maintenance you are indeed able to get the pod uh to begin stabilizing uh, however, uh, the Admiral is not out of the woods yet. Uh, you do need to continue working on the pod in order to fully stabilize him. But the good news is uh, you only need two more breakthroughs, and the difficulty has gone down to a two. All right, a little bit of progress, Drake. Let's keep going. Still a daring medicine? Uh, I would say you could go back to control at this point. Um, basically, if you fail one of these rolls, it goes to daring instead. Gotcha. I'm going to burn a momentum for a third night. I'm using all of the momentum today. Mm -hmm. As I'm okay with this. Please save okay. Skull. So... Ha. I then I have a question. Oh, well, never mind on this one then. Yeah. There goes. That's so, yeah, that's two moment. momentum. And yeah, if you could roll me another six challenge die, 11. Uh, I will say that if you spend one of the momentum you just got, you will complete the extended task. Let's do it. All right. So, uh, yeah, you thankfully are able to do what is essentially a warm boot, a warm reboot of the cryopod. Semi-ironic, but there you go. And, uh, yeah, the Admiral's vitals are stabilizing, and everything appears to be ship-shape. 
in Priyota as a sigh of relief as he sits on the floor. All right, crisis averted. One of them. Well, small victories. Mm-hmm. I'll just be lucky Jensen didn't decide to heal Skull. All right. That so, would have been hilarious. Uh, we're going to go back to the bridge now. Because at this point, the Callistos have launched and you're starting to get data from them and the probes. Uh, so this time, uh, I would like Darval, since we haven't heard from you a whole lot recently, uh, I would like you to roll me a insight and a con, and the difficulty here will be a three, and the ship will assist you with a sensors con. Okay. Um, I have formation maneuvers, maybe? Um, do you have astro navigation, maybe? Or do you have something like starship recognition? I have Starship piloting, but that's it. Hmm. Nah, I'd say you probably don't have a focus then. Very well. Insight plus con. Um, I'm going to take one die, f- one momentum for an extra die. Okay. Uh, three. Oh. oh. Wow. That's a lot of zeros. That is a lot of zeros. Jensen! All right, I will say I will allow this to succeed at cost, uh, but I will be taking a little bit of threat for it. I'm okay with that. All right. So, Darval, uh, you're looking at the incoming data uh, when you realize that there is a... uh, Well, there's two things. Uh, The first is that... Uh, you are actually not alone out here. And by that I mean you're detecting what could be either a large ship or a large structure uh, approximately one light year distant. Um, Now, I can answer some questions you might have, but I think because you are succeeding at cost, you're unable to identify anything particular about this structure or... Uh, ship, whatever it is, at this range. Okay. Um, am I at least able to make out like it's... Is it a metallic structure? Um, can I see if it's what type of metal? Uh, I would say if you give me your remaining momentum, I can answer that question. Nah. Uh, Captain, I'm... Uh, Captain, the Callistos and our probes are detecting a structure one light year... Uh, Roughly one light year at Mark 123, Mark 26. I'm unable to determine its composition, whether it is a station or a ship, or anything more useful than there is something large, sir. <sighs> I'm on my way up. See if, can, yeah, see if you can get a better resolution on it before I get there, but if not, uh, we'll head over and investigate. Yes, sir. Sending dispatch orders to the Europa. Recommend going to yellow alert, raising shields. Agreed. Yellow alert. (laughs) So, as uh, Mirthrin returns to the bridge, uh, at this point, uh, the Callisto Europa has been able to determine that it is indeed a structure. And it is larger than the Amalthea. It is like a scale 8 or a scale 9 structure. And it looks like just a giant dry dock in space. And I guess I will just preemptively put you guys on this map. Mm -hmm. So you can see the scale of the thing. So this is a huge dry dock. Um, it, it is quite large. Uh, it also has these uh, articulating arms, uh, which are probably not only to hold the ship in place, but possibly to uh, work, uh, you know, move materials in place, etc., etc. Um, but that's what you're seeing. That's, uh, that's pretty much what the Callistos have found so far. Commander Gotag. Um, Commander, Captain. Uh, uh, let's try sending a standard hail, see if anything responds. All right. So uh, you send out a hail, and sure enough, you do get a reply. 
uh, audio only, and it is a very robotic, very artificial voice. It says, uh, this is Station Gamma 3. We are able to provide mechanical and biological repair services at a, free, at a fair price, should you be interested. I don't like the way it added biological. <laughs> Thoughts? We should we should at least inquire about their uh, prices, sir. Perhaps uh, Chief Engineer Freepak would be should be on hand to, to to tell us whether or not those prices are fair. Great, great, spacious. Uh, Good point. Then it sounds like I will be the one I'll, I'll come. negative voice and say that we should avoid it at all costs. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I am definitely not going to just park the Amalthea in that thing. But uh, maybe we can learn something about it just from passive sensor scans. Run, run a sweep of it, see what you can tell about its power source or whether there's anyone on board. All right. So if someone wants to roll for Hamasi, because I think uh, McCall just stepped away. Uh, yep. Let's do Hamasi. Let's do a insight and science or engineering. And the ship will assist you with sensors engineering. Uh, and as a point of order, you guys can buff uh, Hamasi because this is technically activating her. So you can provide her uh, with a boost to an attribute, a boost to a discipline, uh, you can give her another focus, you could give her a value, or you could give her a talent. Let's see what... Nothing from the shifts. Just... And just yeah. deciding what we should give him us. What was the task again? Uh, the task is going to be an insight and science, or an insight engineering. Uh, let's give her a plus one boost to insight, because that's at an eight... Okay, so just note somewhere on her sheet that we have already boosted an attribute, because you can only do it once. Just stick that in the values thing for now. All right. All right, uh, insight science. Mm -hmm. uh, no focuses that apply. And I'll spend a momentum to get a third die. Okay. Two okay. successes. Two's all you need. So, uh, Hamasi kind of looks at the data and says, uh, Sir, uh, I believe I've found something similar in our data banks. All right. Well, it's, Put it on screen? It's actually two things, sir. Uh, so she puts on screen a very similar image to the one that's currently being displayed. Uh, it is a, a much less technologically advanced dry dock. And uh, it's it pops up, say, on the right side of the hollow screen. And then below it, uh, you see a picture of the caretakers. And she says, if I understand this correctly, sir... Uh, the original Enterprise, the NX-01 Enterprise, encountered a dry dock similar to this uh, long, long ago. Uh, they called it the Wear. They, they belonged to the Wear. Uh, it was eventually destroyed, sir, but uh, there was sort of a, a joint Klingon Federation uh, search to eliminate these automated repair stations. And to my knowledge... They were all destroyed, but it was never explained who the where were or where they came from. Uh, I believe that this might be a where facility. But, uh, sir, I'm also detecting similarities to the caretaker construction. Uh, it's, it's subtle, but there's a certain isotope in the metallurgy suggests that they might be related to the caretakers in some way. Or at least be using the same raw materials. Curious. Yeah, and Mertrin will sort of call up the 
NX01 mission report on his pad and like skim it for the details there. Out of character, I haven't actually watched that episode, so I don't know the details. Okay, long story short, um, the Enterprise had taken quite a bit of damage from a Romulan mine, and they had sent out a distress call saying, hey, we need repairs, because if we don't get these repairs, we won't get back to Stardock for several years, because they were limited to Warp 2. Uh, A Tellarite freighter captain said, hey, you should go here, there's a repair station, it's great. And they went to this, they found a repair dock, and this was actually the first time uh, that we saw replicators on Enterprise. Um, so the whole point with the repair dock is it was fully automated. Uh, they made a trade of a couple hundred liters of warp plasma. And the station was able to repair uh, almost everything on the Enterprise within 36 hours. However, the caveat was is that it tried to abduct Ensign Mayweather... Uh, and it tried to pass it off like he had died. It created a medical clone to sort of explain where the real Mayweather had went. Huh. And uh, the... Sort of, does it say anything about the Enterprise and Klingons systematically destroying all the docks? Yes, yes it does. It does go on to say that... Uh, the Enterprise did destroy the uh, dry dock it had been with, and then later on it helped the Klingons destroy the other facilities that were found. But again, you have to remember that if that was an Enterprise era, this is now the post-Nemesis era version. This is like four centuries later. Mm -hmm. It's also worth noting the station adjusts itself it takes a it takes a scan of you of you everyone in your ship adjusts itself to be perfect for not only the ship but all the inhabitants on it and it even can provide medical assistance mm-hmm. hmm. well, I have, well i have no particular desire to step into the spider's web so let's try backing off and see if it reacts okay so, uh, we'll say for sake of argument that you guys have traveled uh, to the immediate area uh, just to get better scans and vet better visuals. Um, as you move the Amalthea away, the dry dock does not respond. Or at least doesn't do anything to indicate that it's, you know, annoyed or anything with you leaving. Hmm. <sighs> That's Captain. Decent. Yes? This might, while mm, while initially an illogical assumption to willingly set foot into a dangerous situation, this does provide the opportunity of bringing the Amalthea up to full system spec for the first time since we've been in the Gamma Quadrant. We are aware that the station may try to mm, outwit us, so to speak, and perhaps we can prepare some countermeasures for it. After all, we have we have come where well, we have technologically progressed significantly since the first encounters. Hmm. Still, if this was a military ship, I might consider it. But we have civilians on board. I'm not willing to risk it. But let's. I'll tell you what. Let's what if, put, oh. Captain. What if we um, loaded up the damaged parts into a Callisto and flew the Callisto into the trap? That actually might not be a silly idea. But there. Worst well, case um, scenario, we actually losing a Callisto would be pretty bad, but it's worse. It's better than losing the crew. The USS Io still has some damages from its uh, fight with the unidentified species. Mm. Perhaps yeah. we could send that in unarmed and see what, or unmanned and see what happens. And maybe put the worst damaged components of the sensor system in as well. See if it heals. The, see if it heals. See if it repairs those. Out of character, the uh, Klingon Federation Task Force used a modified code from the Ware's operating system to shut them down. So reprogramming it is a because the entire the whole thing about it is that 
it it, it, it malfunctioned. And that's why it doesn't mm. need to keep re repurposing biological processors. And so it, potentially uh, software could, you know, change could True. argue around this. Okay, well, so, uh, yep, yeah, out of character. So I'm thinking a couple of options here. One, we load up a Callisto with broken sensor parts, push it into the dry dock, see what happens. Uh, alternatively, we try and just go full. We are we are the, in charge now and just try and actively subvert the station code. It's probably about this time that the captain's getting the report from Prier saying that the Admiral's pod uh, was trying to depressurize. Oh, right. The, um, the, um, if we load the pod in, that might, they might be able to fix that as well. Mm. That sounds yeah. awesome. Thing Let's is... do this. <laughs> yeah. Well, in that case, though, Mercerin would definitely want to, like, have control of the station before putting the Admiral into it. Uh, is obvious. There, the the entire Al character, the entire station is modular except for the one central database where it keeps its biological processors. And in the Enterprise episode, they were unable to scan that section. We should probably see if we can actually you know, get you know a read on that area. Oh um, darn! We've got twenty fifth century sensors, but they're broken. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, Although yeah. if. The, although, if we stuck them on the Callisto, had them repaired, brought them back, installed them... Captain, uh, I have a proposal. We load up, yep. load up the Admiral. They will not take the Admiral because he is dying. If they might be able to medically fix him, if not, they will be able to fix his pod. I propose that I accompany them on one of the Callisto's or a shuttle with just that pod. Just they want biological life. I am. My biology is um, probably not compatible. Hmm. Just, just to remind you, even if we have fully functioning sensor suite, it would take two months in dry dock to install them. That is a good point. So, do, do, do we want to? So, so from what I'm hearing it now, it's take the Callisto. Rosazo and the captain in the cryopod park them in the dry dock. See what happens. It's a good start. Yeah, a good we start. also have uh, the biomimetic gel that we could potentially fix their biological uh, processors mm -hmm. if they need it. If we load up the pod with biological gel, that may t they might take well, that I mean, as payment. Well, I mean, we do still have to negotiate payment. Mm -hmm. So, I think regardless, out of character, we should move everybody closer. Also, out of character, we should make sure the shields on the Amalthea are at maximum. So, oh, yeah. because they, they transport their victims. All right. So, in that case, uh, contact the station. Let them know we are interested in getting the Callisto and a trill in a. Cr malfunctioning cryopod fixed okay so what i'm gonna say because uh it'll work the best uh i'm gonna say rosazo uh you're gonna take the io in yes we figured we figured out a way to be sensible without just ignoring the encounter entirely mm -hmm. <laughs> no I, I i had prepared that had you guys said nope and just left i, I had other things but this is good um so rosazo i'm curious uh who else would be on the away team with you or would it just be you I, I wouldn't want to risk anyone else but me. Okay. That would be a... I'm, I'd look forward to a chat between Rosazzo and Drake about that. It's Rosazzo's like, it's anyone else comes, they might be taken. We are gambling that they do not want Porta biology or a dying trill. Well, Drake did say, or at least Walter did say, that he was going to stay with the Admiral's pod, so Drake might still be coming. I, I, I can definitely imagine Drake just insisting point blank that he stay with the Admiral. What, what, what do you say, Walter? Um, yeah, true to character, Drake would stay with it. Okay. In I that case, uh, rule you. Yeah, we'll just uh, we'll put these tokens on there so we know who's there. 
No, but in learning from my past mistake, I will tell Rosazzo that he is in charge of this whole ordeal. Uh, I'm simply here to take care of the pod. Understood. So, uh, Rosazzo and Drake, uh, plus Admiral Skull, uh, you all load up into the IO, and you fly on into the dry dock, and uh, obviously it's way oversized. I mean, the, the IO seems puny compared to the size of this dry dock, but the articulating arms just kind of very gently uh, descend down on the IO and clamp onto it. And then a gantry way is extended out until it connects with one of the airlocks. And Rosazzo, uh, if you could roll me a reason and security, please. Uh, the difficulty here will only be a one. I will. I will go first. In case I decided to make the atmosphere for me. Reason security, is it? Mm-hmm. All right. I will say this can succeed at cost, but I will take threat for it. All right. Seeing what I rolled. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's take that threat. See what okay. happens. So, uh, it is actually a good thing, Rosazzo, that you went on ahead because, sure enough, the internals of the station are quote-unquote Horta-specific. Uh, the environment is not unlike where you might have grown up in. Uh, it is very warm, very uncomfortable for other humanoids, but to you, it feels wonderful. In fact, uh, very, go ahead. Very claustrophobic, very little uh, open space, tight, tight corridors. Mm-hmm. Um, Very little atmosphere. But basically, as you go across the gantry and into the station proper, uh, you are led only because there's one way to go at this point. Uh, you sort of follow the corridor along until you come to a circular room. And in the middle of the room, there is a pillar. And as soon as you, I guess, not walk in, but sort of slide in, um, a, a holographic display of the IO uh, appears from out of the pillar. And that same robotic voice says, uh, damage detected. And it highlights areas on the IO where the damage is. Uh, this facility may repair this damage uh, for the appropriate price. And it displays uh, to the side of the image. Uh, it displays a textual version of what it is willing to take as payment. Um, now, in terms of payment... Uh, what it is, uh, it, it basically scales from the hell no to the, yeah, we might be able to manage that. Um, what it's asking for is about 200 liters of warp plasma. Seems reasonable from the amount, yeah. We probably produce a lot of warp plasma. Um, the other thing that you notice is that it's saying that the average repair time uh, is going to be about three hours, which is significantly high or significantly lower than had you tried to do re the repairs yourself. So yeah, it's I like, click my com badge, wave my hand over the text so it translates it for me to me, and then I read out loud to everyone else. Mm -hmm. Captain, here are what they are offering the repair times for the IO is saying, giving me an estimate of three hours. Does it include the captain's pod in the... It does in indeed. Uh, it does say that uh, medical services is listed and it is included in the price of 200 liters of warp plasma. For 200 liters of warp plasma, we can restore the admiral's pod, if not the admiral. That is suspiciously reasonable. Rule of acquisition 294, Captain. A bargain usually isn't. But. There's Any a, further yeah. details, like fine print or anything? Scanning. Yeah, nope. flip down the full list. Uh, unless you're uh, unless you're blind, you're not seeing anything that says, oh yeah, and we own your ship now, or oh yeah, we also steal someone from your thing. Like, none of that. It's, it's very straightforward, well, very direct. Technically, I am blind, but <laughs> no eyes. Uh, but yes, uh, the, the hand sensor doesn't pick up any additional. Mm -hmm. 
It's uh... nothing that I can read, Captain. There, there is bound to be some hidden catch, but is it worth the risk to save the Admiral and possibly repair the Amalthea? Or the Io? <sighs> and Mercer and all will just like tap, tap a few numbers and authorize the transfer of warp plasma. Right. Keep fro- all right. Keep your eyes on it. Get ready to get ready to beam Rosazo Drake and the Admiral out of there if something untoward happens. Right. So uh, you are given coordinates where to beam the warp plasma, and you beam it over, and the holographic display uh, sort of glows green, and the robotic voice says, "Repairs commencing. You are free to use the facilities here." As repairs are underway, please move any and all personnel away from repaired areas. And uh, a door opens up to your left, and you see what is essentially a large waiting room or a large sort of bar that rivals the Amalthias uh, that is not occupied by anyone, but it does provide you an overlook uh, over the IO as the arms, the articulating arms, uh, begin to work very frantically. And you notice that uh, they are not only materializing needed components, uh, but that they are doing so in a manner that is not standard replication. Uh, yeah, but like it's on, not some sort of sort of super ultra cool replication. Yeah, it's it's definitely not showing the the usual signs of replication. Um, it seems to be almost like spray painting the repairs as it goes, if that makes any sense. So I imagine we throw Drake into an environment suit and join me in the lounge. Mm-hmm. And I would say that if Drake starts to go across the gantry way, uh, the atmosphere does shift so that it's still, you know, not bad for Rizazo, but it is at least tolerable for Drake. Hmm. Um, Almost don't need my Teflon spray today. Temperature <laughs> is appealing. Um, but relevant to Drake, um, a floating sort of obelisk uh, does sort of appear where in whichever room you are sitting with the Admiral in. And this floating obelisk, uh, it is pure black. Uh, it just looks like almost a rectangular prism, uh, maybe about the size of a, uh, a door. Uh, and it sort of just floats in a few feet off the floor, and uh, it says, or at least makes the noise, uh, please stand back from the patient. Uh, I'll take a couple steps back. All right. And a beam of uh, sort of white and green energy uh, lances out from the obelisk and connects with the pod. And you're looking at the readout, and you see that uh, there is some form of nanotechnology involved here. Um, not Borg level, uh, but, you know, s- some very small machines doing very delicate repairs. And this goes on for maybe five minutes, and then the beam stops, and the obelisk says, Patient has been stabilized and is ready for activation. If you require any further medical attention, please let us know. And unless you stop it, the obelisk departs at that point. No, I don't have any reason to stop it. All right. Um, I'll check the readings on the outside of the pod. Uh, everything looks green. Uh, you're seeing that. Uh, yeah, of course, you're no doctor, but uh, actually, you know what? Let's let's actually make this roll. If you could roll me a reason medicine. And uh, let's see what happens. Uh, and to answer your question, McCall, yes. Sweet. Um, would an investigation focus work? I'd say it would. Of course not. Oh. Ooh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take a threat for that. Um, again, you're not a doctor. Uh, you don't have the medical knowledge that Preer does. 
but it looks fine to you. Okay. I don't have any... I mean, it, does it look like it's back to what it was before it originally was damaged? Like, all the readings are the same, the readings on on Skull are the same, and all of that? I would say yes and better. Like, Skull's going to get up and walk out of this pod or start hammering on the inside of the pod? Potentially. Okay. Duly I noted. It's, I, it's probably still... S- cryoing him, but yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Push the red button. You know you want to. He then, fixed uh, all his arthritis. <laughs> He's got uh, a spore skin back. Then uh, <laughs> hopefully it fixed the alcoholism. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, no, I'll just stay with the pod until we get back and I will let Prier do the honors to make sure that I don't do anything wrong. Okay. So, uh, kind of as a point of order, is anyone doing anything during this three-hour period? And it's an open question to anyone. I would have probably gone to deck four as prayer. Okay. Same. Can I have a quick... Um, yeah, once prayer is done with deck four, I'd like a scene with him and Darval in sickbay. Okay, sure. And that's funny. I was going to do the same thing with uh, Gorteg. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Let's just do a party in sickbay. Sure. All right, so uh, Free Pack and uh, Preer, you guys head to deck four. And if I understand where this is going, you more or less want to scan for anything? I mean, what are you, what are you looking for in particular? Uh, anomalies, uh, anything, any partic- particles that are emitting that shouldn't be, uh, whether or not people are sleeping next to unsecured EPS conduits, stuff like that. Gotcha. Really anything that would have caused this to happen. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Let's have uh, Chief Repack. Let's have you do a Reason Engineering. Prier, yours is going to be a Reason Medicine. And you can assist each other on this. The difficulty here is a 2. What is your target number, Free Pack? Uh, reason Engineering, right? Yep. Is eight engineering five, but I've got diagnostic as a focus. I have reason ten medicine fourteen or wow four fourteen. Yeah, you go. I'll back up. Uh, would research methods work? Sure, why not? I also have sensor operations. So oh yeah, of... sensor operation would have fit better. I can apply focuses to an assist roll, right? Uh, yes, you can. What's the difficulty? The difficulty is a two. Okay. We need one. Yep, we need to see a success from free pack. I, I rolled. Did it not go through? Uh, it does not appear to have. I don't yeah. see anything. I rolled, a, I rolled a one. Oh, there oh, it there is. You go. All right, hey, uh, you get a momentum. And yeah, uh, what you guys find is that, uh, we'll say for sake of argument, you start near Jensen's quarters. Um, What you're realizing is that, yes, actually there is something wrong near Jensen's quarters. And uh, ironically enough, it is an unshielded or at least a not properly shielded uh, EPS conduit that runs right by uh, Jensen's bedroom. Chief, are you seeing this? I, 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 I see it. This is... Uh, I'm going to have to talk to repair team sticks. I mean, this is shoddy workmanship. Look at this. They've, they've, they've cross-lined it. Uh, uh, there's no shielding on this coupling. I, I, I got Jen- to get right to fix this. Jensen was complaining about uh, headaches before all of this happened. He said it had been occurring for a few days. I, I mean, I'm going to have to hunt down the rest of this line to see what else, who, where else this is unshielded, but I can exposure to this even do something like that? I mean, we'd have espers running over all over the place if it was true. With Jensen having a strange anatomy, it could have been... Uh, more than his body was used to and 
could very well have caused this. All right. Uh... So feel free to chew out whichever guy was responsible for the bad job. Mm -hmm. Might have been Captain Murth and he was hanging around. <laughs> uh, box engineering. Engineering, sir, go ahead. I need you to give me a swing shift to prepare to come over here on deck four. Uh, yes, sir. What will we re what will we be repairing? I'm gonna need a complete run of this EPS line running along the starboard side. I, I, I you're just gonna see this mess when you get here. Uh, yes, sir. We'll be right up. So I'm wondering if Jensen's just floating in space back around Suetha, waiting for one of the other ships to notice him. <laughs> Ophion shot him just to be on the on the side of caution. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next up, uh, we're going to cut to, you know, maybe about 10, 20 minutes later. Uh, Prier, when you walk back into Sick Bay, uh, waiting for you, uh, we'll say, is both Darval and uh, uh, Gortag. Uh, Darval has his arm, is cradling one of his arms as if it might be broken. <laughs> wow. Uh, I guess great minds. Uh, Gortag's actually walking in with one of his arms around like his ribs midsection area. I walk in the door. Man, I'm a popular guy today. What happened to you two? Um, Gore, uh, Commander Gortag and I attempted a uh, a different version of our uh, physical activity getting down here today. Um, we were racing sir well uh, I was oh we were racing you weren't no oh I, I was trying to get down here quickly because when the ship was launched across space I slammed into my console and I think I broke a rib or two oh is that why I misinterpreted the situation sir I was Un it was my understanding that we were just having our morning uh, repeat of our morning physical. Oh, well, and I was just trying to keep up, sir. And well, that's when I good job. I did not notice the um, open bulkhead floor on deck five. I tripped, tried to, and attempted to catch myself. It did not go so well, sir doctor i can see that why don't you both step into my office let's take care of this <clears throat> so prayer uh it is a very simple process if you could just roll me a control medicine difficulty zero please don't roll a complication <laughs> roll a complication oh there goes your arm <laughs> <laughs> i shall now be known as lefty vulcan for the next I, I was going to crack a joke about, well, you know, the doctor on the, the uh, Ophion's doing uh, marvelous work with uh, prosthetics. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, well. hey, you get a momentum. Uh, yeah, uh, Prier, it's, it's fairly easy to treat both their wounds. Um, but the one thing you'll notice, I'll say, is that uh, Gore-Tag's injury is perhaps more extensive than he's letting on. It's still treatable. It's just that he's doing the typical Klingon thing of, uh, you know, writing off his injuries as being, you know, less than they are. I don't have a broken arm. You've got a broken arm. Mm -hmm. Broken rib, punctured lung. You know. Mm -hmm. Maybe. <clears throat> Man, Commander, you? your redundant systems are working well today. Uh... <laughs> yes, Doctor. It's uh, sometimes good to be a Klingon most of the time. I wouldn't know. No, you have spots, not a cranial ridge. And Gorteg will crack a smirk like he just made the greatest joke he's ever heard. <laughs> I do have spots. Thank you for noticing. Hmm. Commander Gorteg, 
If you were able to perform such uh, feats of physical endurance well in a slightly um, subpar state, then perhaps we should perf then perhaps I we should attempt to step up our physical routine. I suspect that both you and I could travel run far faster than most humans. It would be nice to have a capable um, workout partner. Well, I, uh, of course, I, I believe we have talked about this before, but just one problem after another, after another, after another, after another, you get where I'm going with this, right? Commander, you're uh, describing my Tuesday. Well, wait, it's Tuesday? <clears throat> Commander Gorteg, when was the last time you slept? Darval, you beat me to it. I, I, I don't know. Um, in the words of uh, Chief Freepok, don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. Do I need to order you to go take some sleep, or are you just going to go do it? Uh, I will as soon as we are done with whatever we are doing. Well, I fixed you here. True. Um... Well, I mean, I'm, yes, okay. Uh, just please let the captain know that I'm not abandoning my post. And he actually kind of looks sad when he says that. Commander, you can finish this shift, but take the next two and sleep. I'm sure my wife will like the fact that you are making me stay home. Most likely. And then Gortek will just turn around and walk out of sick bay and head back to the bridge. Okay. Doctor, thank yes. you. Yes, not a problem. That's what I'm here for. Now we have to figure out where Jensen went. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wander back and try to surreptitiously see if Gortek is up to a race for the bridge, but I don't think he is. <laughs> Very good. All right, so we're going to skip ahead a little bit here. And uh, Prier, uh, you're getting a hail from Drake saying that he's bringing the uh, <laughs> captain's cryopod back on board. Um, also, a little bit of context. Uh, so the three hours pass without incident. Uh, by the time the three hours have finished, the IO is better than it started off as. Uh, and by that, I mean if someone told you that they had just been in dry dock, uh, you might still expect problems, but everything is running perfectly, if not better than perfect. And, and yeah, the IO gets back fully repaired, and you may remove all breaches from the IO. Uh, all right. um, then hearing that, Gorteg is going to order, maybe not free puck, because I know he's busy doing pretty much everything else, mm -hmm. but uh, maybe Sona and possibly Darval to give it a complete once over to make sure that there's no Trojan horses, basically. Roger. Yeah, and Roger. when he's free, and well, no, when he's free right now, we'll get Priya to like just do a very thorough scan of the captain to make sure it is in fact the captain. The admiral. Um, and yeah, the admiral. And then uh, on that same note, uh, Drake is also going to ask for the same thing on himself. Okay. So, Prayer, uh, still in sick bay. Uh, at this point, uh, the Admiral's pod has been reinstalled where it started, and you're able to do some scans on both the Admiral and uh, Lieutenant Commander Drake. So, if you could roll me a reason medicine, please. The difficulty here is a one. I'm going to spend a momentum for a third die. Alrighty. Um. For focuses, would any of mine apply? Uh, Research yes, they would. Or sensors? Yeah, right. I would say you have multiple that apply here. Dear God, rerolling the complication. All right. Aw. I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there. You are the one who said, I believe it, let's see, 1222 Pacific. Dear God, we are rolling high today. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually you guys are like, 
crit machines. Okay, uh, good news, Prier. Uh They are who they say they are. They are not highly advanced clones or otherwise duplicates. They are who they say they are and who they should be. Well, good news. Everything seems to be the way it should be. I'm not reading any thing artificial. Um, is there... And, and not on myself as well, correct? Correct. <laughs> not, you seem to be who you are supposed to be. Then one thing they used was some sort of nanite technology on the Admiral. Is any of that still in his system? If you give me a momentum, I will answer that question. Let's do that. All right. The answer is there are some trace amounts, but you're basically detecting that these nanites are biodegradable and that Skull's body is already processing them into what is essentially waste. Good news, Lieutenant Commander. It seems that although there are trace residue of the nanites, they seem to be uh, being processed out of the Admiral's body as waste. Interesting. Well, if everything checks out, then I guess we're okay. Agreed, although I am intrigued to see if they have fixed our issues with the symbiote. Well, uh, it's bizarre. We've had two commercial breaks and nothing's goes, gone wrong yet. <laughs> I, uh, I had the option of doing it when I was on the station on that uh, dry dock, but I kind of wanted to wait until we got back here and at least you were around knowing our luck something would go wrong probably a good call let's move the cryopod into the main med bay and see what happens okay all right so uh you drag the admiral's pod into the central uh central bay and yeah uh, nothing uh nothing happens along the way Drake, would you like to do the honors of unlocking, or do you want me to? Well, if everything checks out, and we think he's coming out of this, you know, I know someone who would probably want to do it, and probably be the best person for him to see coming out of this. Theophian isn't here. <laughs> I, I agree with you, drink and i just go over uh hit my hit uh my com panel on my desk lieutenant commander prior to uh specialist vetu vetu here go ahead you want to come down to sick bay we have a surprise for you i'll be there shortly sir boop tattoos on the board <laughs> I, I see no way this can go wrong mm-hmm Ex except for the crippling amnesia, but we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> oh, that would be cruel. <sighs> well, Vetu, it seems that Skull has been repaired, for lack of a better way of putting it. Shit. Did, was something you figured out, Doctor? I can't take credit on this one. Uh, we've, in at least from the reports I've been seeing, we encountered a dry dock facility that um, also had a medical bay, and uh, they were able to use their technology to, uh, as far as I can tell, fix the problem. To quote uh, one, to quote something that the Vulcans are so fond of saying, "Fascinating." So I can release him now. I called you down here so you could do the honors. Hit the button. 
Very well, Doctor. And she pushes the defrost button. All right, so there's a hiss as the cryopod <laughs> begins to uh, depressurize and warm up the body of Skull. And the process takes maybe maybe two minutes in all, but eventually there's a, a click and the glass front of the cryopod clicks open and reveals a uh, intact, uh, cognit- uh, slowly cognitively aware admiral. And uh, unfortunately, McCall, you're going to have to talk to yourself here. Yeah. Quick, dump all your threat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm spending two threat to make you talk to yourself. Oh, you don't have to spend threat. I'd do that willingly. <laughs> <clears throat> ma, ma, ma. Where have I been? Uh, Skull blinks a few times. I'm sorry, miss. Have we met? Ooh. Aren't you a handsome gentleman? You remind me of a younger husband. And I'll take two steps out of the tank. Now, where in Tarnation Nation have I landed? Admiral? Uh, Ad- Admiral? No, 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 silly. You must be one of them Starfleet characters. Tell me, how did you like my last show? Drake deadpans. Ah, oh, hell. Prayers just has a very quizzical look on you. On his face. Uh, Vetu just goes absolutely confused. Um, Skull, are you- who are you? I'm surprised you don't know me, young man. My name's Teze. Teze Skull. Oh boy. Now you see why I said what I said. Uh, So apparently, this thing reverted Skull, the symbiote, back to thinking he's his second host. Interesting. Uh, Tezzy, is it? Why, yes. And who might you be? Well, I would be uh, Lieutenant Commander Jackson Preer. Ah. Joined with the Preer symbiote. Oh, a pleasure to meet your acquaintance, sir. Now, if you'll excuse me, I do seem to be a bit underdressed. Well, Tezzy, we have some things that we need to discuss. Well, yes, there do seem to be a few things missing here. I ain't talking about my clothes. Yes, about that. Uh, I don't. Dear. I don't remember. Did we? Did we put skull? We didn't put skull in naked. He's in like a hospital gown, right? Yeah, he's mm-hmm. in some sort yeah. of hospital okay. gown. Okay. Because I. Uh, Phrasing. Yeah. Right some. Some things are missing, like a host and a half. Mm-hmm. Well, I was thinking more of the um, physical attributes that are missing from Tezzy. Mm. Well, yeah. Uh, to save from awkwardness, let's say that uh, this conversation happens, and this is where we'll take our ten minute break. Uh, so yeah, if you guys could be back uh, five after the hour, please. And yeah, BRB.
unmute everything. All right, and we're back from our break, and we're going to start off uh, with a scene change because I keep forgetting to do it. So you lose one momentum. And yeah, uh, a senior staff meeting has been called. Uh, uh, Teze Skull is not present, but Commander Cam is sitting in. Uh, she is no more aware of the situation than the rest of you. Uh, but yeah, I figure you guys have a lot to talk about here in the senior staff meeting. I was treated very well. They had some very delicious rocks. There was a particular ignit that was very lovely and palatable. Dissolved very nicely in my acid. Indistinguishable from the real thing. Well, uh, obviously not a good idea to let down our guard just yet, but for now this seems to be as good as it seems. Well, about the only thing that they've done strange is, well, Skull's wake, it's just not Barton. It, Say again? It is awesome. When they returned, I did extensive scans. The They used a nanobot technology that seemed to be biodegradable in our systems. So uh, Skull was, for lack of a better way of putting it, repaired. We opened up the cryotube, and, well, he's... Barton is now reverted to Tezzy Skull, his second host. So... Surprise! Are we hoping... Surprise. So, like, have his pre... Have his subsequent hosts gone missing, or is just one of the previous hosts has accidentally reasserted itself? I'm not entirely sure. I am assuming the latter. Um, but until we have our specialist from Trill that comes with the convoy that is coming from the big Bajoran wormhole and the Federation space, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, I've forgotten about that. Oh, I'm going to get such an earful. Um... On the Jensen front, well, he's ascended. He's a light being. He sent us all the way over here. We have no idea where he is. I managed to, with my teams, completely replace the EPS conduits on deck four. Uh, whether or not this contributes somehow to aggravate his, I believe it was a genetic modifier, Doctor, I, I don't. I have no idea. More research needs to be done, but you shouldn't have any more people wandering around with symptoms. We'll call it a unique genetic outcome. Captain, if we decide to take the Amalthea in and get it fully repaired, the there are two other ships with. Um, with the fleet that have uh, quantum slipstream. They could be here within an hour and also receive full uh, repair suites. Hmm. <clears throat> it, it is possible that the abduction that took place two centuries prior was due to limitations in the processing of the repair station that have since yes, been the, um... corrected. They may be entirely altruistic. Yes, the report does seem to indicate that uh, the issue arose because the station was low on critical parts. Let me tell you something. Mm. Never confuse wisdom with luck. We need to get better scans of this thing, especially the central control center. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I agree with Freepuck. I'm still not willing to risk the entire Amalthea, but... Uh, if we strip the May 1 and the, what was the other one that had the QSD? Red November. If we strip the May 1 and the Red November down to a skeleton operating crew and run them through, and run them through the dock, that would definitely take a major load off the repair logistics for the fleet. Uh, if I can interject, it is the so Ophion and the May 1 that oh, have QSD. Oh, whoops, my bad. The Ophion is, um, I believe we've only got one breach, though, so we're not very terribly yeah. damaged. 
And, but that and, that's only, and that's only because your engineer hasn't had a chance to roll yet. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But that will not get the Amalthea back to the fleet sooner. But if we have the Amalthea sensors repaired, we will be able to travel at higher warp speeds. Mm. Um, um, and, Captain, if we are not going to put the Amalthea in there, um, I would volunteer myself or suggest Lieutenant Darval to be the one to helm the Callisto to lead us back. Could we unload most of the civilians into the Calypsos and shuttles and leave them, or even escape pods, and leave them floating for a day outside while she was repaired? Hmm. Yeah. Out of character, I'm still really attached to the just put the damaged components in and then install them manually ourselves plan. Well, the one thing I'll say on that is we'll say for sake of argument, you did a test run by including damaged components on the I or the Europa or no, the IO when you sort of had it sent in. The mm -hmm. damaged components that were just sort of sitting in storage were not repaired by the station. Ah, didn't recognize them as part of the ship. Correct. <clears throat> we could move. Could we move part of the ship in the front? Repair just the front and <laughs> the back, backing out. I don't think that is uh, feasibly. I don't think that is a feasible possibility. I mean, apart from anything else, this dock is actually bigger than the Amalthea. Just the tip. <laughs> Phrasing. Not to mention it's completely modular. There's nothing to say that it couldn't just expand. It couldn't take it, to move over the. Oh, rest so of it's the amount. not like this dock's going to go anywhere. I say yeah. we try the Callisto guided slip warp warp slipstream idea to get us back first, and then later on we can potentially send ships here afterwards. The only thing with that, Captain, is this is quite a bit out of our way. Uh, indeed, at warp eight, it is a forty. It, uh, it is a fifty day. Tr travel mm. and the 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 Callistos do not have uh, quantum slipstream sir yeah, fair point may I make mm. a suggestion captain go ahead with the Mayuan able to slipstream why don't we have it come out we've already established that we can communicate with it and if anything were to happen with the dry dock we have the Mayuan there as backup, so to say. We can't I'd rather, to I'd one. rather have the Yof mm. the, Ophion would, the Ophion would be a far more uh, formidable tactical vessel. Alright. Well, hopefully this thing doesn't respond incredibly poorly to mild threat. If we go in with all the civilians, Captain, I, I, there's just there's just so many of them. I mean, how there's no mm. way we could keep track of all of them to make sure this doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, okay. So how much space is there on the station? Back at Suetha. Back on Suetha, uh, there is enough for. I have it somewhere here. Uh, if you make it so that everybody has a bed, uh, but, you know, has roommates and maybe does hot shifts, you can get about 400 people on the station. Yeah, so very few. But, I mean, if you're just, you know, standing room only type deal, you could probably cram about 3,000 in there. Not really doable. I mean, depends how long it takes for the... Amalthea to get repaired, but like, if we essentially temporarily use the Suetha sta uh, Station Alexandria, is it Alexandria we went with? Yeah, I think we yeah. went with Alexandria. Yeah. You know, like if we converted Station Alexandria into a essentially a temporary refuge shelter with just sleeping bags for everyone for a couple of days, we could like have the Maywan and the Ophion shuttle the civilians back and forth, get down to a skeleton crew on the Amalthea, and then put the Amalthea through. 
Now, the only thing I will say about that is, remember, you do have a limited supply of Benamite. Now, of course, you know, with the rogue planet, that's going to change, but there's still a limit on how fast you will get new Benamite. True. Leak its skeleton crew, the Ophion and the uh, May One, and have them go into evacuation limits. Yeah, well, what are the evacuation limits on the Ophion and the May One? I'd imagine it's not massive. Right. So Ophion being scale five, I think, can hold upwards of probably about eight hundred or a thousand, but that's really cramming them in. Uh, as for the May One, it's a Steamrunner class, so I would say that maybe about uh, 500. Hmm. Uh. And the Amalthy has got a crew of 1,500, right? Mm hmm. Now, is that including civilians or? Uh, yes, that is including civilians. Okay. So, with a combination of the Callistos, the Ophion, the May One, and probably convert the Danubes to get another couple of dozen out, we could probably comfortably get the civilians off, at least. <clears throat> Alright, well, you guys. Tell Actually, me yeah, did, does the. Um, did the station, like, tell us, give us a, like, approximate. Con uh, repair time before it started? Or? Uh, no, you need to take the Amalthia into the dock to get a gauge for uh, how much time it would take. Yeah. Plus there is also the qu question of what sort of payment it would need to repair a ship the Amalthia's size. Correct. We yeah. are you, you haven't found that out that. yet. Yeah, we are working on half information. We could take it in and see how much it's charging. Alright, hold that thought. I'm going to switch us servers on Discord real fast. My okay, hopefully, server, uh, hopefully people are not roboting as much now. My ping to the server was pretty good. It was my packet loss rate was at like forty-two percent. Ah, yeah, I've I've uh, I've had similar problems. I, it just seems to be rolling across the country right now. I'm at sixty-six percent packet loss now. I mean, you're coming through fine. Just Discord being weird. Anyways, sorry to interrupt. All right, so. Um... Any modifications people want to make to that plan, or no, sir? I can begin the, I can begin coordinate, or I can begin travel coordinations immediately. Alrighty then, let's get in contact with the fleet, apprise them of the situation, and start organizing. <gasps> Alrighty. So. Uh... Unless anyone has any other things they want to bring up during the senior staff meeting, we're going to cut to the wear station again. And yeah, uh, so just so I understand, you're having the Ophion and the Mayuan come out, uh, and while they're en route, uh, would you be taking uh, the Amalthia in just so that the station can get a scan and all that sort of good stuff? Right. I'd be tempted to wait until we've actually got all the civilians off before we even go into scan, because I'm paranoid. Okay. I mean, it's just order of operations for me at this point, so if you yeah, want to do so, that first, we can. <clears throat> get, get the Ophion and the May One here, organize getting all the civilians off onto them and the shuttles and the Callistos, then take the Ophion in with just the Starfleet crew. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, let's have you subtract 125 light years of QSD from the Ophion and the Mayuan. Uh, and sure enough, they show up. There is a evacuation from uh, the Amalthia, so that you know it's it's a skeleton crew on the Amalthia. Uh, out of curiosity, would the uh, Admiral, uh, well Teze, uh, would they be included in the civilian population? Oh, that's a good point. Uh, I would Teze probably did. Oh, I'd say Teze would count as a civilian. Okay. Does the Admiral still count as the Admiral? I don't know. It's No one's told her that she can't boss people around, so she's been bossing people around. Um, considering 
Yeah, yeah, actually, that, there's probably something in the Starfleet code, but what is the protocol when a Trill's previous host asserts control and the current host has a rank? I don't think there is any protocol for a Trill's host. <laughs> I think Gull's symbiote is CM, special. I think the CMO's uh, decision. Actually, yeah, yeah, no, of course, the CMO can declare the admiral unfit for duty. Right, because he's not in the in the state of mind he was as he was as an admiral. Mm. To be so fair, yeah, we, 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 we can just have duty. Clear, declare the admiral unfit for command. Oh, no, what what Per just said is true. What? I haven't declared him fit for duty yet. Oh, no, you haven't. So, yeah, problem solved. Um, the regulations prove to not be dumb after all. <laughs> Since the Ophion only needs four people to pilot it, I'd like to dump off non-essentials and as many crew as I can onto Alexander. Okay. Oh, yeah, before you come out. Right, so we have as much... We can take as many civilians from you guys as possible. Yeah, I, I keep forgetting that the Ophion is almost capable of a operating autonomously. Right, mm -hmm. so is the Red November. Right. The the two ships that, if they both had QSD, would have been great as Red November and the Ophion, because technically you can run them with, like, three people, or the Red November with nobody. Mm -hmm. right. So we could probably squeeze in... Uh, We've probably got pl enough space to get the civilians, if not comfortably, then at least sitting room. Mm. Alright, so let's see. Uh, I Did you subtract the light years from the Mayuan? I subtracted it 100 from Ophion, so we're <laughs> at 800 now. Uh, should be 125, so you need to take off another 25. Will do. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll say just to keep things moving that it's, you know, it, an evacuation happens. You get the Ophion out there, uh, you get the Mayuan out there, and uh, you more or less uh, have the Amalthea on a skeleton crew. Uh, you lead the Amalthea into the space dock, and you notice that the space dock is sort of shifting and otherwise accommodating uh, itself for the Amalthea. And uh, I'm curious, who would you send over to do the negotiating uh, with the computer? Would it be the captain himself, or would he send someone in his stead? Captain mm. and free pack. Yeah, I, I, my, my first instinct would be free pack. Okay. I, mean, I, I, I hate to typecast the Ferengi, but this this is stuff that he is good at. Okay. Rizazo would, I, I would like to accompany you. Yep. For security. And uh, d d don't forget to specify mechanical repairs only. All right. So, uh, we'll say that uh, Free Pack, you and Rosazo, and maybe the captain, uh, you head down the gantry way, and you arrive in that same sort of circular room with the pillar in the middle, and it displays a holographic uh, image of the Amalthea, and it is already highlighting the damage sensor rays throughout the vessel. And the robotic voice says, Extensive component damage noted. This will require two days of repair time. The following methods of payment would be accepted. And uh, Freepak, I'd like you to roll me a Insight Con or an Insight Command, please. Uh, difficulty 2. And Mirthrin, if you're there, you may assist with your own Insight Command or Con. Alrighty. Um, would any of my focus to supply metallurgy, EPS, diagnostic, emergency repairs, warp core mechanics, and jury rig? Uh, I would say no, not in this instance. Alien like technology? Uh, maybe. Um, if this would be more of a, an insight or a, uh... A trade, oh, yeah. a trade negotiation, yeah, something, I something social. Don't really have anything like that then. So, all I mean, right, I got well. two successes. Yeah, so let's see if the captain gets you momentum. He does. You get a momentum. I do. So, free pack. Uh, you're looking at the the options of payment. You may, you know, you write off that one as nah, that's too steep, and that one, why would anyone pay that? Uh, and you eventually come to two options. 
uh, that really stick out to you as being financially and business savvy like. Um, the first option is you provide all of your uh, remaining sort of small craft parts as well as a fourth of your uh, bioneural gel packs and that will satisfy the station. That's option one. Uh, option two is you give up a Callisto. Oh. Hmm. That one's not happening. Huh? I like option yeah, one. I'm actually, I actually like the ship parts and bioneural gel packs. Because we're going to have to get replacements in from the Alpha Quadrant at some point anyway, and those are easier to ship over than a Callisto. Right, and the one thing I will say about this is uh, if you do get rid of all your small craft parts, we will start actually keeping track of how many fighters are being blown up. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> I want to speak to your manager. <laughs> and I'll knock on it. Put me in. Put me in contact with somebody I can talk to. Query not understood. Please restrate request. Uh, uh, initiate negotiation protocol. Under or. Uh... Query not understood. Please re uh, restate request. Uh, only a fool passes up a business opportunity. I'd imagine the fine art of trade and negotiation is lost on the computer. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. Well, I mean, I, I, I can't negotiate with a machine. Uh, maybe if, if it was a, a bit smarter. I, I've been known to take uh, Sona for, you know, or run for her money every now and again, but this thing is just, I can't can't talk to it. We're going to have to choose either option. Which one do you want? Let's go with the bar and your or gel packs. I imagine that'll be what the station needs more. All right. Uh, and I'll do do on that. And I'll, and I'll turn to Rosazzo and I'll nudge him with my elbow and my, my uniform kind of singes a little bit. And I'll go, uh, never trust an honest... And nothing is more dangerous than an honest businessman. Noted. All right. Stick with me, kid. I'll have you run in this place. <laughs> Alright, I, I, so... I doubt that. Um, so, uh, you, uh, you obviously <laughs> tell the computer that you'll take option one. It gives you coordinates <laughs> to beam in the, uh, the parts and the neural, the bio neural gel packs, and then it tells you the same thing it told the people on the IO to make sure that uh, people are away from be uh, areas under repair. But otherwise, it gives you a repair window of three days. I thought you said two. What the hell? EPS conduits. Mm hmm. To replace them myself. Might as well have. Right. Well, uh, assuming you uh, you do push the button or you at least uh, beam over the components, uh, the arms start going to work. And uh, for sake of argument, I'm going to say there is another time skip, uh, but we will handle at least one scene during the time skip uh, because I find it funny. Uh, so on the bridge of the Ophion, uh, Panek, you are sort of, you know, uh, just sort of monitoring the situation, making sure that uh, the civilians you have on board are uh, doing just fine. When onto the bridge comes strolling a certain admiral who thinks that they are a past host. Admiral on deck. Ah, I heard a lot about this ship when I, when I caught up on myself. Wanted well, to see it for myself. You must be that Captain Panek that he spoke so highly of. This is an intriguing circumstance. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, I see that they haven't told you everything. Um, yeah, 
My name is Tezeskal. It's so nice to be here. Ah, I see you are a previous host of the Skull Symbiote. Absolutely. I am doing a bit of a show tour at the moment. Uh, pub uh, publicity. Uh, publicity. Just, I don't, I'm just imagining in the background Shatsu and Locke looking at each other with what the hell expressions. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that y'all are in a bit of a tight spot at the moment, so I don't. I just want to stay out of your hair. I do just want to say it's been an abs. You, you have been an absolute darling of a host, and I cannot wait to put on a show for y'all at some point, just as a. A show of gratitude. Could you could you give us a, a little preview of that? I I, I think that is highly uh, unnecessary and inappropriate on the bridge, considering the circus. Commander Shatsu speaks up. Uh, actually, sir, I I kind of want to hear it too. I believe I do not need to state the protocol for having civilians on the bridge during certain times. <sighs> Buzzkill. Uh. If you like, I'd be more than happy to demonstrate something small. I'm still getting used to these vo vocal cords. Perhaps down on your um, mess hall, I believe is the term? That would be a more appropriate setting. Excellent. Um, his, I'm going to wander over to the uh, replicator. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Computer, if you could please replicate a six-string guitar, please. Um, acoustic. All right. I'm spending some threat that uh, when you replicate the guitar, bridge lights go out. Yes. Oh, oh my. Oh my. My stars. Did I do that? Uh, uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, engineering to the bridge. Uh, oh, I push this button, right? Okay. Uh, this is the bridge. Hello. <coughs> uh, um. Mm, Chief Cranston, this is Captain Panak. Uh, uh, Captain, uh, are you uh, making some tea again? Because I'm showing loss of power on the entire uh, uh, bridge deck. Uh, didn't didn't we have a talk about this about ordering ordering tea when we're short on power and parts? I can assure you, Chief, it was not me this time. Airs. Former admiral is uh, given, being given a bridge tour. Unfortunately, they were not made aware of the issues regarding air power situation. However, uh, if you had managed to prioritize the bridge repairs, as I asked, uh, perhaps. Well, actually, if I can cut in, in, he did repair it. Like he did fast track it. So this is a persistent issue. And, but I did say the last thing I was going to fix was that replicator. Right. <laughs> Perhaps you should take a look at it again, Chief. In the uh, meantime, Miss... What was it again? Tezzy. Miss Tezzy, I'd please ask you to retire yourself to a more appropriate venue. Oh, of course. Uh, I'm so sorry for all the bother that I have caused. I'm going to head into the Turbolift Go. Um, pretty much just expect it to open. I walk right into it. And I step back, and then I have to... Oh, where the, where the bother is this m manual handle for this thing? It's about then that the bridge lights come back on. Ah! <sighs> I... What a strange ship. I'm just going to wander in and head off to, I don't know, the duck. All right. Computer, where does one go for a decent drink around here? The duck is an adequate uh, service for beverage consumption and social activity. Well, that uh, sounds fine. But yeah, uh, once Skull is uh, safely in the turbo lift, uh, Shatsu turns to Locke and says, you, you got that, right? Oh, every second of it, yes. <laughs> Very good. I am sending it priority one to Captain Beckett. <laughs> and yeah, Beckett, you get a recording of all of that. Outstanding. All right. 
So, uh, um... Well, it's funny now. If, if we can't fix them, it suddenly becomes tragic. But it's yeah. funny now. Gotta live in the moment. Uh, so my question is, uh, since this is a three-day affair, uh, did anyone have any other scenes they wanted to have happen, or shall we skip ahead a bit? Um, I am going to say, well, uh, now that Prier had to step away, mm -hmm. um, at some point, Prier would probably either get told or come to the bridge, and Gorteg has not left his station, and Prier would have ordered him to take his uh, couple of ships off. Right, yeah, right. I'd, I'd imagine uh, I imagine that's probably fair to say. Uh, well, since it is three days, uh, do we have a go at scanning for Jensen back at Suetha? Yes, yes you do. Uh, so let's have... Who's left? The Lysithia. Uh, if the okay. Lysithia crew... Um, oh, go ahead. Free Park, uh just offhandedly when they're around each other complains to Drake that uh, the ship is even re repairing his Tongo table. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just got the tilt exactly where I wanted it. Man, you know how hard that was? Um... And Draco will respond, yeah, but there's nobody on the ship to see you change it back. Well, I feel like I was going to leave it that way. <laughs> well, I mean, it? You, you can't leave it fair now, can you? The house has to make a little, you know? It's a, it's a mean, profit margin. Of course, of course. Right. Um, what scan did you want the... I have the Lysithia. What yeah. uh, scans did you want? Uh, if I could have... I think it's Margoth uh, on the Lysithia. Uh, if you could roll me a Reason Science, please. And the Amalthia... Or not the Amalthia. The Lysithia will assist with a Sensor Science. The difficulty here is going to be a 1 after your Advanced Sensor Suites. Wonderful. Just looking for Margoth's sheet there. Oh, there we go. What is it again? Sensors. It is reason science for Margoth. Well, I said you get you one. There we go. Hey, you get two momentum. Nice. Uh, good news, bad news. Good news. You find Jensen. Or at least what you're told to look for in terms of Jensen. Bad news. Apparently he uh, is falling towards the star. Uh, like a monster can. Sir, I've picked up a, an odd sensor uh, blip. It it seems to be reading humans, but it's modulating weird. There's a lot of photonic activity. Anyway, it's it's falling into the the system's gravity well, which yeah, which you don't have to tell me is not a good thing for whoever that is. Uh, Miss Swan, bring us about. Get us close so that way we can transport that person in directly to sick bay. Aye, um, uh, Captain, bringing us around. And changing pages of notes. Um, and uh, bridge to uh, sick bay, uh, Lieutenant Scrim. Scrim here. Um, uh, be prepared Scrim. for one to be beamed aboard. Um, the uh, Jensen that we were told to scan for and look out for, I think we might have found him. Understood. What should I be preparing for? Everything. Everything sounds like a good thing to be prepared for. <laughs> <laughs> um, and bef before we get him to you, uh, read up about... Well, let me ask this question. Um, out of character, has mm -hmm. the Dowd part been told to everyone, or have we just been told look for the Human Torch? That uh, is a Mirthrin call. Uh, probably wouldn't have specifically said Dowd, but you are aware that Jensen is currently a bit an energy being. Okay, then uh, then Lieutenant Scrim, I would be prepared for a being made of pure energy, if you can be preferred for that sort of thing. It's a bit out of my wheelhouse. I mean, tend to focus on plants and stuff like that. And 
energy doesn't tend to work well. Beings of, of pure energy, but I'll do what I can. If if only he was made of plant life, then it would be a perfect situation for you, wouldn't it? Someday. Big galaxy, someday. Um, And then, uh, yeah, uh, Beckett will turn to to Swan. Miss Swan, please? Aye, uh, Captain. Right. So we cut to the Ophion sickbay, uh, where, Scrim, uh, a patient is beamed onto your uh, bio bed. And uh, you do see that it does resemble uh, Lieutenant Jensen. And interestingly, uh, before your very eyes, the energy begins to solidify. And he slowly starts to fade back into, quote-unquote, human normal. Um, And I'd say maybe about after a minute of this, he appears to be fully human once more. Um, Can um, Beckett eventually join the scene? Uh, yeah, Becca can walk in whenever you like. In fact, uh, I would say if you wanted to be there from the start, you certainly may. Sure. Yeah. I establish a nice little one, like force field for him to contain him so he doesn't drift off a bit. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little. Uh, uh, I'm going to establish a, the effect of a ground wire. Engineering isn't good, but I'm seeing if I can like drain off his excess energy. Okay. That's how my treat. Before you do that, though, I'm curious, would you have run a scan on him? Probably, actually, yeah. All right. Well, in that case, uh, we'll say for sake of argument, you were told to look for a very high esper rating. Uh, he is no longer showing any esper coefficient. <clears throat> hmm. Interesting. And Beckett's got his tricorder out uh, scanning at the same time. Mm-hmm. How does one go from having that level of an esper rating to a zero? Mm. And I'll just kind of look at Scrim. I would imagine he expended all his energy and burned himself out. He needs to build back up to it. That mm. would mean he it's progressive. If he continues to display esper ratings, we could definitely medicate and reduce his aspirating, keep it manageable so he doesn't manifest again. Treat the his energy being status like a chronic illness. Interesting. That's actually not... That's actually a really good idea. Um, I'll scan Jensen too for other things that for a normal human would be... would bring their energy down. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, uh, hydration... Protein levels, sugar levels, uh, all of that. Like, basically a general medical scan. Gotcha. Um, I'm going to say, for sake of argument, that uh, it all checks out, except for the fact that he's maybe a little bit hungry and a little bit dehydrated. Um, But you are probably on the right way of thinking. I'll say that much. Okay. Um, He's godlike powers, but burned himself out. No one needs to recharge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that. I'm kind of thinking the same thing too. Um, Jensen, are you? I mean, you can hear us and understand us, correct? Yes, Captain. I'm a little bit confused why I'm on the Ophion, but yes. Well, first off, you're on the Lysithia, not the Ophion. But, oh. I mean, I know the sick bay looks the same, but. <laughs> um, uh, you're on the Lysithia. Uh, apparently, when you reached your full potential, let's say, uh, you flung the Amalthea uh, 120 something light years away. In the wrong direction. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that's also true. I I did. I I honestly don't remember anything after going to see. Uh... Prier on the Amalthea sick bay. I, I went in with a headache, and next thing I know, I'm here. Interesting. Um, like well, how much do you remember? What was that you said about ascending? <laughs> uh, it, yeah, what Scrim said. What was the last thing that you remember? Uh, sitting on the bio bed, and then uh, it, it felt like uh, my body was on fire, and then I was here. 
uh, I, damn, I can't help but say uh, it all, all. Everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Um, mm-hmm. Do you remember the roundabout timestamp of when this happened? And he'll give you a roundabout uh, answer that yeah, it, this is before he transformed. Okay. Um, do you remember, other than your headache, do you remember anything else? The surroundings, uh, you know, how your eyes perceived light, um, or anything like that? Uh, No, Doc, or Captain, uh, not really. And how about now? How, how are you feeling now compared to then? Do you still have a headache? Uh, Mm. do you... Are you hungry? Thirsty? Oh, I I could eat a horse, sir. Uh, I could also use something to drink, but the headache's gone at least. Interesting. Well, true. At least the headache's gone away. Um, Do we do the cruel thing and never let him know? Well, I've already kind of spilled it a little bit, but um, by saying reach his full potential, but um, um Hmm. Doc Doctor, do you have any questions? I'm going to recommend a few pills for you to take. A little bit, Jensen. They replicate some you know, mild sedatives and muscle relaxants. Something to keep you calm and relaxed a bit during this uh, rehydration period. You may experience um, muscle fatigue and perhaps some bowel leak. He just blinks at you. I'm, I'm sorry. What was that side effect? <laughs> well, it's a muscle relaxant. Just uh, just don't put any on any good pants. Um, and when you uh, Elh, when you said we're on the right path, mm-hmm. you're meaning to control it medically, or that he's missing something. If you give me a momentum, I will answer a question. <laughs> okay, I will. Give you a momentum. All right. So, long story short, uh, you think that he's been building up energy his entire life and that he spent it all, and now he has to build it up again before he could, quote-unquote, ascend. Got it. But we're talking years, decades. We're not talking months or days. Right, because he's, what, Late twenties, early thirties, maybe older than that. Yeah, I'd say he's probably about late twenties. What type of energy? Can we just like move his quarters right beside the warp reactor and speed up the process? <laughs> maybe remove some shielding from the walls. If I mean, I, I, I will remind you that a unshielded EPS conduit was the catalyst, so maybe. True. So, so, so but, maybe we've but, discovered why Jensen is so perpetually accident prone. It's because he's always on a ship, so there's always an ambient level of energy sort of pumping him up. Mm-hmm. So uh, what you're saying is we need to bury him in a planet somewhere, right? <laughs> so, um, and I'm sure when we share all the information, we'll get that that's what's going on. Because I'm 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 fairly certain if. If Mirthrin didn't say the part about the Dowd, then they're obviously not going to send the part about he was effectively sleeping on an unshielded EPS conduit. All right. Well, I mean, apart from anything else, Beckett is also a captain, so if he accessed the records, he'd probably be able to find the information himself. Yeah. So okay. Beckett true, 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 could true, be true. privy to this. Um. Then, uh, while Scrim's still talking to him, I'll go to a uh, a panel on the wall and pull up any guest quarters or actually, because the Lysithia happens to have diplomatic quarters, mm-hmm. or the, the talent for the diplomatic suites, I will find one that we can shield, or is shielded from any major EPS conduits. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, besides the ones that are required to power the suite, but and that's where I'm gonna basically, like, bunk him up until we meet back up with the Amalthea. All right, noted. Um, and after Scrim gives him all the muscle relaxers and the uh, laxatives, um, I'll uh, I'll take him to the suites myself and basically 
have dinner with him and just talk to him and try to keep fishing information out of him. Okay. Uh, so and of course, we're... radio the bridge and tell Ty that she's she's got the con. Okay. Any, anything to get out of that so, that uh, situation, huh, sir? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. This is a fleet-wide emergency, Commander, and that's all it is. Yes, sir. All right. So, uh, I think this is actually a uh, perfect scene to end on. Of course, uh, three days pass and the Amalfia does repair all its sensor breaches, and as far as you're able to tell, none of the uh, the uh, civilians or none of the crew have gone missing. Uh, but you can remove all breaches on the Amalthea, every single one of them. Woo! And I just one more thing of housekeeping uh, before we cut the stream. Uh, for the Amalthea, it's still going to be about 30 days to get back to the fleet. So there's still going to be, you know, uh, Amalthea-centric focus next session but i was curious whether the ophion and the mayuan would they stay with the amalthea the entire time or would they return to starbase alexandria you want to flip for which one stays i think if they both they both go back that's going to burn through a lot Um, right and and there's no sense sending amalthea without an escort yeah and the amalthea can like transfer a couple of its people over to, to the Ophion and Maywan so they're not running on a complete skeleton group. Plus, mm. Ophion is one of the fastest ships at normal warp. Actually, yeah, like, you know, Ophion's got like a warp 9.975 max speed. Mm-hmm. Right, and we can hold it for longer periods of time. So we could keep the warp bubble stabilized for that wake for a well, longer period of and at a higher velocity. And, and not not to cheat it, but looking at the our supply list sheet, the Mayuan's got a greater supply of Benamite. Right. So them jogging back to Alexandria with QSD isn't going to be as big of a ham, you know, uh, uh, problem as the Ophion who has less. Mm-hmm. So I mean, keep the Ophion with the Amalthea and send the Mayuan back. I'm hearing no argument to the contrary, so let's make that happen. All right. Well, uh, with that said, I think this is where we're going to end Session 9. So players stick around for a little bit longer. But to anyone watching on Twitch, YouTube, or listening in on Podbean slash iTunes, thank you so much, and see you later. Bye-bye.